Welcome to AIN TV. I'm David Lombardo. Heli Expo 2010 is officially underway. Coming up, we'll have headlines from the show floor, including Augusta Westland's unveiling of their newest addition to the A109 family and how Eurocopter is investing in its future while dealing with current market uncertainty. AIN TV begins in just 30 seconds. Welcome back to AIN TV. I'm David Lombardo. We're broadcasting from Augusta Westland booth here at Heli Expo 2010. Thousands of people poured into the George R. Brown Convention Center when the show opened. There are more than 50 helicopters and half a dozen mock ups on display here in Houston. Augusta Westland unveiled the grand new in grand style this morning. Check out the latest member of the distinguished A109 family of helicopters. Most of the improvements promised by the grand new light twin can be found in the cockpit with a more advanced set of avionics to improve operational flexibility and safety. AIN TV's Charles Alcock asked Augusta Westland to highlight the differences. Thanks, David. Well, here we are with Augusta Westland. They've just unveiled this magnificent grand new helicopter, and uh, we're with Mr. Giuseppe. Orsi from uh, Augusta Western, please explain to us what are the new ideas here? What makes this a true new product? Well, what makes it a uh, new product is uh, actually the brain of the helicopter, is all the avionic system. We have, uh, for the first time, uh, we have uh, a fully certified uh, uh, vis uh, synthetic vision on the basic, uh, of the basic screen, on the basic uh, helicopter, and uh, we can uh, is allowed so this helicopter can actually fly in uh, IMC condition. Has the man machine interface for this cockpit changed at all? The way that the pilot interacts yeah, with this? Absolutely. We had a lot of uh, research work uh, to find uh, an optimized interface with the pilot, and that affects the way the autopilot is managed, the way the set point are set uh, by the pilot, the way presentation are given in the display. So there is uh, an integrated symbology coming from both the AFCS and FMS to give to the pilot uh, an integrated view. Uh, at a glance without scanning all the traditional instruments. From the Augusta Westland Sand, back to you, David. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. Eurocopter executives say 2009 was a paradoxical year. In terms of the overall value of business, it was its second best year ever. But the company also saw 105 helicopter orders cancel. President Lutz Bertling said okay. one thing is clear. Okay. The company is investing in the future. This is the time where you need to push innovation. This is the time when you need to push R&D. This is the time where you need to develop new aircraft so that you're ready for the market once the upstream comes. Bertling and American Eurocopter President Mark Panini addressed reporters during their annual breakfast, pointing out the company didn't lay off any American employees in 2009, a pretty exceptional achievement in an aerospace sector that shed thousands of jobs last year. At its Heli Expo booth, Eurocopter is showing early results of its Blue Copter technology development program. The blue edge blades have cut the noise from an EC-155 helicopter by three or four decibels. It uses a double swept shape to reduce the noise generated by blade vortex interactions which occur when blade tip vortices interact with the rotor blades. The blue pulse system also cuts noise but does so through a piezo active rotor control system. Robinson helicopter arrived at Heli Expo in its first turbine-powered helicopter, the R-66. The two-day flight from California verified its 120-knot cruise speed with a fuel burn of about 23 gallons per hour. Vice President Kurt Robinson made the flight and said it should be easy for operators to upgrade. It's really nice. Actually, what's really cool is the transition from the 44 into that is going to be very easy. The startup procedure is extremely simple. And once you get underway, except for the fact that it's a little smoother and you're a little faster, you feel like you're in an R44. 
The R66 is powered by a single Rolls-Royce RR300 turbine engine that the company says will carry a payload of 927 pounds at a maximum operating altitude of 14,000 feet. Leather seats are standard on the R66, as is a baggage compartment large enough to haul your golf clubs. Robinson is pricing the R66 at $770,000 with an anticipated delivery schedule to begin later this year. Be sure to check AINTV.com regularly as we'll be posting updates throughout the show. For all of us here at AINTV, I'm David Lombardo. Thanks for watching.